we're facing a major constitutional crisis. Uh, it's the equivalent of a civil war, or to a certain extent, a coup d'etat. The Justice Department, which oversees the FBI, but usually gives the Bureau its head in criminal and other investigations, particularly in the sphere of public corruption, has moved decisively under Obama to close down the FBI investigation of the Clinton Foundation, to stop them from getting search warrants, to block them from paneling grand juries, to stop them from using wiretaps and other investigative tools, to close in on the Clinton Foundation. This effort to stop them is reminiscent of the Saturday Night Massacre, where uh, Richard Nixon tried to fire the special prosecutor in the Watergate scandal, and the, ju the attorney general refused to go along, and his assistant refused to go along. Both quit, and finally they found somebody to go ahead and do the firing, and it didn't stick. They had to replace him with a new special prosecutor. This is really analogous to that. The political operation in the White House has taken over the Justice Department. Eric Holder, former Attorney General, saw to that, and he populated the career Justice Department, particularly the public integrity section, with people from his wing of the party who really were intent on keeping Obama in power, regardless of the cost, in turning their glance away from instances of public corruption. But the FBI agents themselves aren't buying it. After Comey, the director, uh, passed on indicting Hillary, apparently almost 100 resignations piled up on his desk of long-term FBI agents that would simply be not, part, not be part of this cover-up. And uh, he announced he had to reopen the investigation. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. In two separate stories, including one this morning, the Wall Street Journal revealed in its issue on Sunday and now again this morning that there are five separate investigations of the Clinton Foundation that have been going on at FBI offices in Miami, Los Angeles, New York, Washington, and Little Rock, and that they're using the WikiLeaks material, some of the emails that the State Department and Hillary have been forced to release, uh, and a wiretap that they used in a separate, unrelated criminal investigation. And they went to the Justice Department with this evidence in February of this year, and the career officials at the Justice Department, stooges for Eric Holder, uh, said, no, there's nothing there, we're not authorizing an investigation, and literally tried to close that investigation down. But the FBI agents weren't having it. They continued it under the leadership of the courageous U.S. attorneys in those offices, who, while appointed by the president, still have some integrity and independence. Closing that investigation down was obviously now what Bill Clinton asked Loretta Lynch to do on the tarmac in their meeting in Phoenix, Arizona. And, but, and they moved to close it down, but it didn't happen. The FBI has kept pushing it. Now, these FBI agents can continue this investigation, even without authorization from on high. They'll have to do it with one hand tied behind their back, and they can't use all of the ways they usually use to advance investigations. Uh, but they can continue to do it, and the Fox News reports that they have such credible evidence of criminal wrongdoing that the inside sources predict that there'll be indictments flowing undoubtedly not before the election, but that's an indication of the severity of it. And now the President of the United States is attacking his own FBI investigation and his own director of the FBI, accusing him of trying to influence the election by innuendo. And this is the same FBI director, the Republic, the, the Democrats fell all over themselves praising when he announced he was not going to move to indict Hillary. Just to understand the importance of this Clinton Foundation corruption. Imagine if the president of a major foundation, like the Rockefeller Foundation or the Ford Foundation, was working with someone who was not licensed to solicit, it in, uh, to solicit donations, who got tens of millions of dollars of donations, and then split them up with the president of the foundation and put a whole bunch of them into the president's personal bank account for his own personal use. Everybody there would go to jail. This would blow up. But this is precisely what Bill Clinton did. So when he boarded that plane to try to stop this investigation, it wasn't just to help Hillary. It was to keep himself out of jail for the stuff that he'd been doing. And then add on top of that scenario, 
the fact that the donations uh, were intended to pay for special favors, special access, and public policy decisions by the Secretary of State, uh, not to mention laying it in for future influence should she get elected president. This is literally a threat to our constitutional system, and the efforts to suppress the FBI are tantamount to the Saturday Night Massacre that disrupted and basically began to tick to the end of the Nixon administration and the Watergate scandal. There's this civil war between the FBI and the Justice Department is a fight for justice against injustice, and we need to see it in that light. Thanks for watching.